So we're starting with a um, little project that we have here where we checked in the code for the HR schema. So we have here the create script and we also have here a drop script over here. And all of them are in this directory in our Git repository. So what we're going to do now is create a build file that would actually generate or synchronize the database based on the script. Okay. So this is a new build file and we're going to connect it to our source control repository. Um, it's a Git repository, we're going to pick the one from the list and we can connect it to a specific branch. In this case, it's going to be connected to the master branch. And then we're going to mark a trigger here to invoke this whenever someone checks in code into this branch. In the build steps, we're going to use the integration that we have now with the SQL CL command. We're going to specify a username and a password with a connect string. In the video, by the way, I'm not going to show you the connect string because of um, security reasons. And then we have two options, either to invoke a SQL file, which is what we're doing here, basically pointing, for example, to the drop script initially. The other option is to actually invoke an inline SQL command. So first we're going to invoke the drop script, then we're going to add another step in our build, which is to invoke the create script. You can of course create a one file that runs both of them, right? But I'm just showing you the concept here of having multiple steps executed one after the other. Okay. And then we're going to add one more SQL CL script, actually using a SQL CL command. So the nice thing about using the SQL CL utility inside the build is that you can use commands such as the info plus command to get a detailed description of a table. So in our case, we're going to use the description of the departments table. So now we have the full build file in place. We can save it. And um, the next thing that we're going to do is actually execute it. Okay. So we execute it by clicking the build now. This would put the build inside our queue, okay. and our executors would pick it up and execute it. While it's being executed, let's switch back to SQL Developer and look at the files that we have, and we're going to modify one of them. We're going to modify the HR create SQL file. And what we're going to do in this demo, for example, is change the department table definition. So, so far, those are the four fields that are in there, we're going to add another field and um, let's duplicate this line and create an admin ID field. And we can also change um, the length of the department name from 30 to 40 characters. Okay, save this. And we can then use the normal git flow to um, commit the changes. Mark that we want to add this file put in a useful comment on our commit and click OK. At this stage we are still not going to push it into the Git repository. This is right now locally on our machine. Okay. So now let's switch back and look at our build file and what's the status. It's still being executed and when it's done okay, we can see it's successful. We have the green V sign, the sunny skies in the weather and if we click on looking at the console we can see the result of our build file. So as you can see, we ran the drop script, dropped a bunch of the tables that were in the account, then ran the create script to recreate them, and then got the info about the table with the four columns. This is the initial status of our database. Now we're ready to actually push the changes that we did locally into the main Git repository. So this basically creates a new version of our uh, schema creation script inside the Git repository. What we're doing here is we're actually going to push it directly into the main branch, into the master branch. Uh, usually you don't want to do this, you want to work through branches and things like that as shown in the previous video. But just for the sake of this demo, we're going to automate stuff directly on the master. So we did a change to the master and you can see the update here. In fact, if you click on the commit, you can go and see directly the files that were changed and the lines that were changed. So you can very easily track down the history of how your scripts have changed. And now the nice thing is that because we have a build that is connected to this Git repository, 
it would automatically queued for us uh, to be executed. Okay. So this would make sure that our script is synchronized with the actual status of the database. So while this is being executed, let's switch over to SQL Developer and we can actually connect to the cloud database directly from here, providing the username and password, and then look at the status of the table as it is right now. So send drill down here onto the departments table, and we can see the four columns that are in there. All right, so go back into the developer cloud service. Our build at this point should be executing. There we go. It's currently being run by our um, environment and basically running the drop create and then the info um, command. Let's again look at our console. You can see everything ran according to plan. And if you look at the end, we have the new definition of the table established in the database with the additional column and the extra data. And if we refresh the structure in SQL Developer, it's the same thing. So that's it, that's DevOps for your database using Developer Cloud Service connected directly to Oracle Database in the Cloud.